So our next uh, invited speaker is uh, Professor Masoud Atashbar from US, USA. So because I think he couldn't join us online, but he has sent us uh, pre-recorded his talk, so which I will play now. So I would like to introduce uh, Professor Masoud Atashbar. He is currently Presidential Innovation Professor, Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering Department and founding director of uh, the Center for Advanced Smart Sensors and Structures, uh, Western Michigan University. <clears throat> His research interests include uh, physical and chemical sensor development, wireless sensors and nanotechnology applications in sensors and flexible hy hy hybrid electronic devices. <clears throat> His talk today is on <clears throat> flexible hybrid electronics a rapidly evolving technology for sensing development. Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank conference committee and Professor Shafai for inviting me to be here. I wish I could have been able to travel to Mel Melbourne to meet with you all and do this talk in person. However, due to the timing conflict and partly COVID issues, I opted an online presentation. My name is Masuda Tashbar and I am a professor of electrical and computer engineering and founding director of the Center for Advanced Smart Sensors and Structures at Western Michigan University. This talk will introduce flexible hybrid electronics, which I refer to as FHE, and it is a rapidly evolving technology with significant potential to develop various sensors and actuators in novel ways in order to meet continuously emerging needs and to address real world challenges. I will provide insights on FHE, its fabrication methods, and an overview of various smart sensors developed with this technology. FHE is a new category of variable and flexible electronics that combines the flexibility of thin substrates with performance of semiconductor devices. In this, we develop printed circuits on various platforms like plastic or garment by different printing methods such as screen, inkjet, flexo, or gravier printing. The semiconductor devices, including thin ICs, will be integrated on the conductive traces. Flexible hybrid electronic offers many advantages, including flexibility, stretchability, conformability, biocompatibility, as well as lightweight. The bottom left image shows an illustration of FHE device consisting of sensors, display, printed battery, antenna, and thin ICs. Some examples, some example devices fabricated using FHE technology are shown on the right images, which include printed circuits on PET, thin microprocessor developed by American semiconductors, sweat and PPG sensor patches and stretchable circuits. While PCB ha PCBs have been around for many years, there have always been a trade-off between flexibility and performance. However, FHE combines the extensive processing capabilities of integrated circuits with printed electronics, which inherently is an additive process that minimizes material wastage, and it opens a wide range of application possibilities across many different industries. FHE has attracted global initiatives and has growing market potentials. There are over 3,000 companies and organizations working on printed electronics around the globe. To note a few, they are Boeing, DuPont, Jabil, General Electric, Nova Centrix from OEM to material suppliers, and many other prominent research institutions around the world. The potential market for printed electronics is forecasted to reach from $32 billion in 2021 to about $49 billion in 2026. FHE is a multidisciplinary research area involving ink formulation ink and substrate characterization, as well as deposition or ink processes and post-print characterization. Each stage includes multiple functions. For example, formulation of ink 
includes functional materials, binders, solvents, and additives. For characterizing wettings, we look we look into ink rheology. For deposition, we use printing processes such as gravure, flexo, inkjet, and screen. And finally, when deposition and sintering is done, we look into characterizing dry inks to identify its resolution, coverage, roughness, thickness, adhesion, and electrical performance. In the following slides, I will show you different equipments needed for all characterization steps that I just mentioned. I start with ink and substrate characterization equipment. The surface tension of the ink and ink substrate interaction measurements including dynamic contact angle is measured using goniometer. Through this characterization, we identify spreading of ink and with that, we can find drying time of the ink after printed. Inks with less than 90 degrees contact angle indicates good wetting characteristics. In addition, we measure substrate surface properties, which mainly include surface energy. Generally, if the difference between ink surface tension and the substrate surface energy is less than 10 dyne per centimeter, it is an indication of good wetting and adhesion, and we can proceed with, proceed with printing. Then rheological behavior of the ink will be studied using rheometers to know the flow of the ink, with scoelastic properties, and creep recovery to select different printing methods. The non-Newtonian inks with shear thinning and tixotropic nature, where the viscosity of the ink decreases with the increase of shear stress are desired for printing. The four main printers heavily used in FHE are gravure press, flexography, screen, and inkjet printing. The table shows different properties and param parameters associ associated with each printing techniques. Depending on material availability, which includes both ink and substrate, and final device resolution that we intend to fabricate, dictates which printing techniques to be used for the associated step. Specifically, when we are working with multi-layer devices, we use different inks, which one layer will be deposited on the top of the other. Depending on the properties of each ink, we have to work with mix of different printing methods. For example, if you look at inkjet, we notice that this method does not need image carrier, whereas gravure needs engraved cylinder, Flexo needs plates, and screen needs stencil and mesh. Generally, inkjet provides thinnest layer, which is typically less than one micron meter, and screen printing method provides the thickest, which could be as high as 60 micron meter, and each equipment and each requires in inks with different viscosities. We rely on various parameters mentioned in the table to choose what type of printing method to use. After device prototyping and parameter optimization is completed, then we can proceed for scale-up fabrication using pilot printing presses available for FHE with roll-to-roll -roll capabilities. The images on the second row are examples of printed devices fabricated with these presses. After printing is done, we do print quality characterization. We use image expert for analysis and we look into coverage of the ink, resolution, line quality, gap quality, and print fidelity. For example, if we uh, aim to print a hundred micrometer line, we wanted it to be as close as possible to the, the, to the design line width. This is because there are inks where it has width gain or loss as large as 50%. Also, we look into the print quality using SEM, AFM, and light interferometer for its morphological characteristics such as surface roughness, thickness, and particle size. This slide shows 
Other set of equipments that are required for ink making, printing, curing, and characterization. In the following slides, I will discuss some of our recent works that we have completed using FHE. One of our recent work is the development of flexible smart wound dressing. In America alone, over 6.5 million people suffer each year from chronic non-healing wounds and treatment costs related to these injuries add up to $25 billion annually. Chronic non-healing wounds are typically treated either by placing the whole body or part of the body in a hyperbaric chamber for oxygen therapy. The problem with this process is that the healthy cells in the human body are also exposed to elevated oxygen concentrations and results in hyperoxia, thus leading to oxygen toxicity. Therefore, there are a need for development of customizable smart wound bandage that can sense, generate oxygen, and deliver it to the wound region. Western Michigan University, Purdue University, and Indiana University collaborated to develop a lab-based flexible smart wound dressing with integrated on-demand oxygen delivery and sensing. This dressing is fabricated on a biocompatible hydrophobic parchment paper substrate that incorporates patterned catalytic oxygen generating regions with an array of oxygen sensors. The oxygen is generated by flowing hydrogen peroxide over inkjet printed manganese oxide catalyst on the paper substrate. The hydrogen peroxide is delivered or guided to the printed catalyst region through a network of low profile and flexible microfluidic channels that are bonded to the parchment paper and the flow is controlled by an electronic module. The oxygen sensor made of ruthenium dyes is inkjet printed and the wound facing side of the smart dressing features a biodegradable matrix that is bonded to the parchment paper with a fibrin glue and it permits oxygen exchange between sensor or generator and the wound bed. We performed cytotoxicity in vivo and in vitro studies. Different sizes of wound bandage integrated with oxygen sensor and generators developed through this collaborative effort are shown in this slide. The small size bandages of one centimeter diameter was developed to study its healing capabilities on diabetic mice wounds. Oxygen with 80% concentrations was generated and supplied to the wound regions for one hour per day for 14 days. From the images, it is evident that the size of the wound significantly decreased over a period of 14 days, indicating a clear healing of the wounds with these smart bandages. Such localized delivery capabilities can be used to customize patches for specific individuals with different wound areas that need oxygen the most. For people suffering from diabetic chronic wounds, Measuring and ensuring the appropriate oxygen level in the blood flow of the foot is critically important for wound healing. We developed a fully functional prototype of a wearable smart shoe insole that contains optical sensors and printed electrodes. The sensors can monitor arterial oxygen saturation level on a diabetic foot using PPG signals. Continuous monitoring of diabetic foot oxygen level can provide critical information on the severity of the ulcers and the wound healing status and the possible need for oxygenation of the wound bed. Blood flow and tissue healing can be enhanced by effective effectively delivering electrical stimulation and heat therapy to the wound using printed electrodes based on oxygen levels. The developed system can be seamlessly integrated with the Internet of the Things via custom developed mobile apps, which facilitates at-home monitoring by health professionals. 
Harmful microorganisms at surgical sites and wounds are becoming resistant to antibiotics and antifungal drugs, making the condition of the wound worse and untreatable. This is emerging as a serious global threat to the public health. To address this challenge, we developed a flexible, portable, and conformable microplasma discharge device using laser ablation process. This device can kill the drug resistance harmful microorganisms in seconds during uh, using ambient air and temperature to improve wound healing. To demonstrate the device efficacy, an agar plate with 10 to the power minus 4 diluted E. coli bacteria colonies in sterilized water was exposed to the microplasma device. As the microplasma exposure time was varied from 1 second to 10 minutes, an effective bacteria sterilization with an effect and with, the, with an efficacy of 10 to the power 6, which is 99.9999%, was achieved within a few minutes. With this approach, we effectively sterilized Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Bacillus stevolus bacteria within minutes. The surface temperature of the microplasma device stayed below 50 degrees centigrade even after prolonged operation. In addition, we are planning to test endospore-forming bacteria that causes anthrax, tetanus, and diarrhea. Electrocardiogram monitoring has been a critical parameter in analyzing heart condition which in turn enables monitoring the severity of the diseases. ECG tests are performed in hospitals and healthcare clinics using standard wet silver silver chloride electrodes. The wet electrodes require skin preparation and conductive gels should be applied between the electrode and skin to reduce the skin electrode contact impedance for acquiring accurate ECG signals. However, this could be a long, tedious, and uncomfortable process. In addition, conductive gel dries out quickly and restricts the continuous monitoring of ECG signal. We developed a variable ECG monitoring device which consists of dry electrodes and a readout electronic module. The dry electrodes was fabricated by depositing multi-wall carbon nanotube and PDMS composites on a stretchable fabric with screen printed silver layer. The readout module with wireless data communication was implemented on a flexible polyamide substrate. The ECG device was snapped onto the fabric. The device demonstrated better performance in terms of signal integrity when compared to the conventional wet silver silver chloride ECG electrodes specifically if the subject is in the motion. There are many industries with applications that require asset health monitoring on non-planar surfaces. An example of large scale test articles such as a fighter plane is shown here. In a perfect world, the test executor and data analyst would prefer the ability to put sensors at inflection points joints and high stress curved surfaces to have freedom from cabling and clutters to for rapid detection of localized parameters to address this to address this problem we developed a FHE based condition monitoring sensor array system integrated with prenatal temperature sense strain pressure and humidity sensors status indicator, battery, and wireless antenna in collaboration with Boeing, American Semiconductor, Comera, and Imprint Energy. The CMSA system removed the constraints on sensor location, size, wiring, and facilitated direct measurement of various parameters. The CMSA device can enable FHE system health monitoring of assets and equipments for use in aerospace, automotive, defense, and logistic tracking fields. This slide depicts the CMSA system integrated with all components. The sensor responds toward varying temperature, humidity conditions, forced as well as tensile and compressive stress loading conditions are shown here. Humidity sensor realized by printing carbon nanotubes and hydroxyethyl cellulose composites and silver electrodes on 
polyamide substrate. The humidity sensor was subject to varying humidity levels from 20 to 80 percent and sensor resistance increased as the humidity level increased. And this was due to the p-type semiconducting characteristics of the multi-wall carbon nanotube as well as swelling and shrinking properties of hydroxyethyl cellulose. The sensor showed stable performance with low hysteresis and high repeatability and reproducibility. The temperature sensor was fabricated by screen printing nickel on polyamide substrate. When the temperature was changed from negative to 100 degrees centigrade, an overall resistance change of about 40% was obtained, resulting a temperature coefficient resistance of 0.3% per degree centigrade. Four sensors mimics parallel plate capacitor and consists of flexible electrodes and elastomer layer. The electrodes were made by screen printing silver on polyamide and the elastomer was sandwiched between the electrodes to obtain force sensor. The force sensor can easily detect up to 100 newton with an overall capacitance change of 10%. The strain sensors were developed by screen printing silver, electro silver carbon composites on polyamide. When the sensor was attached to an aluminum beam and subjected to a various tensile and compressive loads of 1.8 kilogram, a linear gauge factor of 2.39 and 1.47 for tensile and compressive stress was obtained respectively. Another example of asset monitoring system is in military where the condition of ammunition should be monitored. Since ammunition is manufactured in large volumes and stored for a long time, it is prone to degradation due to ambient conditions, including temperature and relative humidity. Such degrades am ammunition is often discarded, recycled, or in some cases results in user fatalities. Therefore, the condition monitoring of ammunition is critical for both the economic and social well-being of military personnel. The, to address this, we developed a flexible and printed standalone condition monitoring system for continuous monitoring of temperature inside the ammunition container for more than five years. The prototype was fabricated by screen printing the silver con conductive traces on polyamide and integrated with various components including microcontroller. The prototype is robust and can undergo radius curvatures as low as 1 over 32 inches in an abrasive condition and operates in temperatures ranging from negative 20 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade at any relative humidity levels. Moving on to impact sensing. Every year, nearly 4 million concussions occur, of which more than 50% are underreported and undiagnosed. These concussions can lead to traumatic brain injuries, which is the leading cause of death and disability among sport players. Minimizing the risk of concussions and other serious brain injuries by providing information that was not detectable previously is important for health and safety of players. So we developed a patented flexible impact sensing technology called Smart, Hel Smart Helmet Impact Monitoring System that addresses the problem of head in injuries. The system consists of pressure sensors made using silicon material and conductive electrodes that are placed in the helmet bonnet. This system enables the helmet manufacturer to integrate it in their existing helmets. This system automatically monitors the impact's intensity, its location, and direction and communicates the occurrence of potentially dangerous impacts sustained by players in the field with real-time alerts, thus reducing the chance of, in, uh, of inaccurate judgments. The data can be used by trainers and doctors to better understand the nature of injuries. Many athletes, from football players to equestrians, rely on helmets to protect their heads from impacts or falls. However, a loose or improperly fitted helmet could leave them 
vulnerable to TBI. To address this, we develop a highly sensitive fabric-based pressure sensor that can be integrated into different types of variables. Pressure sensor-based fit cap, as shown in the images on the left, can be worn under a helmet and could help revealing the fit of the helmet to the head so that the appropriate padding or inflation can be used to achieve the proper fit. This addresses the severity of, the, of many injuries sustained that are attributed to the improper fit of the helmet. This slide shows surface enhanced Raman scattering substrate and electrochemical sensors for various chemical detection. For example, the top left image shows the cells substrate fabricated by Grab Your Printing Silver Ink on polyurethane substrate. The substrate was held stretched while printing and released after the deposition of the silver ink. This resulted in wrinkled structure on the surface of the substrate leading to an enhanced factor of 6 when detecting drugs such as cocaine. The top right shows three electrode electrochemical sensors. This is an example of multi-step printing in which the, the counter electrode made of silver was printed first on the polyamide substrate followed by working electrode made of carbon and reference electrode made of silver, silver, silver chloride ink. Impedance spectroscopy, voltammetry and amperometry were used to detect various chemicals including drugs such as cocaine, toxic heavy metals such as cadmium, lead, zinc, mercury, and toxic organophosphorus compounds such as ethion, malathion, parathion, and fenthion, well below the toxicity level set by U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the World Health, Health Organization. We have also develop sensors for detecting explosives such as DNT in both solution and vapor phase. We also made flexible and compact electronic readout module on polyamide substrate using Texas Instrument LMP9100 module. The LMP9100 IC was the front end of the electrochemical sensing and the microcontroller was performing the calculations and transmitting the wireless signals. The module can be connected to the flexible electrochemical sensors to perform various voltmetry and amperometry characterizations. As shown in the graph on the right, the system is able to apply different scan rates from 8 to 32 millivolt per second. The bottom graph shows the detection of various concentrations of estrogen analytes as well as 10 nanomoles. The whole system can be operated using batteries. For example, using 400 milliamp hour battery, the system can uh, operate for 10 days even when the test is performed every minute. This promotes portability and on-site testing capabilities, which is a key requirement for chemical sensing. This slide shows the summary of various devices fabricated using flexible hybrid electronic technology from wound healing to structural health monitoring to soft robotics. The FHE provides an innovative approach to develop various sensors and systems that can realize numerous applications to make human life better in every way. I am grateful to my faculty collaborators and students in my research group as well as various private companies, consortiums, and federal agencies for providing funding opportunities to develop flexible hybrid electronics. Thank you for your attention and please let me know if you have any question or contact me via email.